In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the deriving the equation of an ellipse and some of its properties. So we got the graph of a basic ellipse here. We'll talk about it being centered at 0, 0, but this is going to apply for any ellipse. We see it's got its center here, right in the middle. It's got two foci. We'll call them F1 and F2. It's got vertices here on the ends, V1 and V2. And then it's got covertices here that are on the narrower end on that axis. Now, to derive the formula, first thing we're going to do is pick some arbitrary point on our ellipse. All right, so this has the value x comma y. So again, we're doing this centered at 0, 0. We're going to see that it's going to work for any ellipse that we want to use. All right, now what makes an ellipse an ellipse is that the distance from each focus to any point on the ellipse, their sums is always the same. So let me put in a couple lines here. So the distance of this line plus this line is always going to be the same, D1 and D2. So D1 plus D2 is always going to be the same regardless of what point I use. Now what is that going to be equal to? Well, we do know that this distance here is A, and I'm going to verify that a little bit later. And this distance here is B from the general equation. Now imagine if this point were right on this vertex, then we'd have from here to here would be this line and from here all the way to here would be this line so it'd be twice as long as A. It'd be from here to here would be A plus here to here. So it would equal 2A. Alright, now let's come up with a formula for D1 and D2. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a perpendicular here. So we do need some values. Now this focus will give those guys some coordinates this we'll call negative C0, and F2 we'll call positive C0. So what C is, is what's called the focal length, the length between the focus and the center. I know our drawings get a little convoluted here, but there's a lot going on. All right, well, D1 is our big triangle here, and here's its perpendicular. So we need that um, length and it's going to be a Pythagorean theorem and what you can see well we know from here the base of our tri the bottom of our triangle the right angle to here that distance is x because that's the coordinate and from here to here we know is c so the base of this right triangle is x plus c so for d1 we're going to have square root of x plus c squared for the horizontal component and then this vertical component is going to be y squared. Now we need to do D2. It's going to be very similar except D2 its, bo its bottom is just this little piece here. Again we know from the center to here is x from the center to here is c so this distance is x minus c so we have square root of x minus c squared and again, this will be y, so plus y squared, and this needs to be equal to 2a. So we've set up the relationship. The next thing to do is our algebra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to get rid of my square roots. Sorry, there should be a plus in here. We're using the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to move one of these pieces to the other side. We're going to have to square and start getting rid of these radicals. So I'm going to have square root of x plus c, the quantity squared, plus y squared equals 2a not plus excuse me minus square root of x minus c squared plus y squared all right now this step is where we're going to go ahead and change colors so you can kind of see the steps square both sides Now over here it's great, it gets rid of our radical. And we just end up with x plus c squared plus y squared. Over here we have to do some foiling. 
I'm going to go through this a little quickly, um, leave it to you to, to verify. But we're going to have 2a times 2a, so we'll have 4a squared. Now our middle term is going to be 2a times this radical, and it's going to be negative. And we're going to have that twice. So we're going to have a negative 4a times the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared. And finally, we're going to have this term times itself, which will get rid of the radical, x minus c, the quantity squared, plus y squared. Move that over so you can see the whole thing. Now, what we're going to do, if there's anything we can cancel, we'll go ahead and do it. So right away, I see, let's do a little bit of simplifying because we're going to have to get rid of this radical as well. So let's see what we can get rid of. Uh, foiling these out, well, I can cancel out the y squared, so I see that, and I'm going to foil these out. So I'm going to have x squared plus 2xc plus c squared equals 4a squared minus 4a times the square root of x minus c, the quantity squared, plus y squared, plus this is going to get foiled out, x squared minus 2xc plus c squared. Now again, we're going to get a cancel out the x squared terms, and we'll get a cancel out the c squared terms. So, we're doing pretty well. What we're going to do is we're going to isolate this radical, and let's see what that looks like. So first thing, I'm going to add 2xc to both sides. So I'm going to have 4xc, and I'm going to subtract off the 4a squared minus equals, excuse me, equals a negative 4a times the square root of x minus c, the quantity squared, plus y squared. One thing we could do here, we could divide everything by 4 so that we don't have to worry uh, about the 4. So if we divide everything by 4, actually we can divide it by a negative 4, we'll get a squared minus xc equals a times the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared. We could divide by the a as well. I'm just going to leave it as is for now because we need to square both sides. Now in squaring both sides, what we're going to get over here, we're going to get a to the fourth minus, now two of these, so minus 2a squared xc plus x squared c squared. Over here we're going to have a squared times x minus c, the quantity squared, plus y squared. All right, now we need to do some more simplifying and see if we can get this to look like an ellipse. So, a to the fourth minus, I'm going to rewrite that as 2a squared c times x plus x squared c squared equals a squared. Now I'm going to foil this out x squared minus 2xc plus c squared plus y squared. And let's go ahead 